from out of darkness Admits our light, that's how a blind man sees Though we lack his sight of what we call reality In all actuality, it's part the duality Welcome, welcome So today, I want to discuss with you Book, Wa'ed, Volume 1 Heal and Enhance Your Brain with Comedic Meditation By Run on, Ra on Nefere Men One of my favorite authors and one of the authors that uh very is very is a good teacher, I should say. The quality of a good teacher is not about how much they know or how complicated. It's about making things understandable to you. So uh, while Ab is about meditation, that's what that means in comedic language, meditation. And uh, this book is very is very small, simple read, but it packs a lot of information, like a lot of his books. And it has like some scientific stuff in there mixed with uh, spirituality, but it basically has a lot of scientific information in there, especially about how we have four different brains or uh, a reptilian brain or mammal mammalian brain or uh, neocortex and the prefrontal lobe and all that breaks down the like, four different brains and like how each brain operates and helps defends how you move and how you operate in life. And so... Uh, let me just, I want to discuss something I read in here. It's very interesting. A little uh, excerpt from here about happiness. It's called Happiness 101. It says, from the perspective of our emotional life, happiness is what we all desire. There's a great deal of talk about the elusiveness of happiness. In reality, it is not. It's just pursued in the wrong way. To begin with, you cannot attain something if you do not know what it looks like or where to look. People speak about happiness in a contradictory manner. At the back of their mind, happiness on one hand is conceived as a permanent or at least a predominant state of joy. And on the other hand, it's conceived as a transitory effect. So and so made me so happy. These is the experience of happiness thus referred to are in reality joyful reactions that are short-lived by nature. The same people can be heard referring to experiences of unhappiness. Their lives alternate between the positive and healing given effects of joy, not happiness, and the illness dealing effects of stress. Now they take the medicine, then they take the poison. Is it possible to be joyful all the time? If it is, wouldn't this be happiness? A life that is free of stress and suffering? You will realize that once you can be happy, eternally joyful, once you realize that there are two types of joy, the outer joy comes from attainment of good things in the world, and the inner joy is a result of spiritual cultivation. Through the meditation system that you will learn from this book, you will reprogram your animal brains to react with a peaceful energy to challenges and to manifest joy in the accomplishment of the feat. Then to enjoy the good things of the world, outer joy, and to be peaceful when you cannot have them or when you lose them is found foundation of divinity. And given the ability to be peaceful in the most midst of difficulties is the foundation of the divine state. Its restoration signals a return to the state of divinity. Stress and suffering are thus eliminated from life, which lays the foundation for the manifestation of joy. You enjoy the good things when you have them. You're at peace when you don't, and you enjoy being able to be at peace in your moments of denial. Hence, you are always in a state of joy. This is happiness. It is called Hotep in the comedic tradition. Its, establish, its establishment is the essence of all comedic meditation. The cultivation of joy in association with difficulties in life is essential for trans transforming the animal brains. Scientists believe that the animal brains are hardwired to manifest fight or flight. This is hard to understand when there are many examples around us of people that have retained these responses. Professional soldiers, spies, etc. Cultivating joy as the result of being peaceful in a difficult situation, one would not find not find the difficulty and jo difficulty enjoyable retains the animal brains to manifest the joy in the situation so basically what that meant to me or what i took from that is like we got a lot of times so that we go from like extreme happiness it's like the polarity we go sometimes to extreme happiness there's sometimes extreme sadness or feeling down and basically, when happiness is temporary, it's temporary, you can easily go from this to that state. That's not true happiness, especially when we're looking for happiness outside of ourselves, when happiness should come from within. And um, 
Like, of course, sometimes when things are going away or we obtaining things, that happiness come. Of course, we're going to be happy. But it's also, we got to find to be able to be a place that when things are going away or not going the way we like, or we're not getting the things we like, to be at peace with that. And when you got to be at peace when things are not going your way, that's when you really tru truly obtain happiness. I see you, girl. That's when you attain happiness, when you can be at peace. Peace is where you find your divinity. Peace is where you, anything good is going to happen. Not from chaos, it's from peace. So being able to go from joy to peace to joy, not from joy to pain to this and that. It's basically, this is what this meditation is about. It's about learning how to maintain that peaceful state at any situation. Because that peace is when you're going to think your way through anything. When you're not at peace, it's hard to think. It's hard to concentrate. It's hard to be at your best abilities. So maintaining peace in the Kemetic tradition, they call it a hotep. I know a lot of people throw that on their name. They think negative of that word, but they truly probably don't even know what it means. But that's what it's all about. Being able to like maintain a peaceful state through everything. And when that, sometimes something's good going on, you feel joy, you feel excitement, but you're not getting too overhyped. Because when you have that extremeness, that extremeness on one end can be extremeness on the other end, the polarity of that. So I liked it that because it just explained like what true happiness should be. And a lot of times we search for happiness in all the wrong things. And we got to start learning to be at peace, even when things ain't going our way. And when you can be at peace through any situation, that's when you find your true happiness. And um, just like I said, this is a simple read. It's very small. But like all of his books, they pack a lot of information and it makes it very comprehensible for you to understand. And I like this book because it has a lot of science back behind it too about like understanding your different brains, different parts of your brains and things like that. But like, I've had this book probably, not even probably a full year, but it's so small. I probably read it about six or seven times because I'm always just trying to like, understand exactly what I'm reading and take it all in and get a full understanding. But uh, if you can get a chance, I would highly advise check out this book, Why F, by Ron on Netflix. What I desire, it's only right. My inner flame got me spitting that fire. It's only right. right.